Today, we think of registered nurses as trusted professionals with the knowledge and skills to make life-saving decisions, but RNs weren't always viewed this way. In the 50s, RNs were mostly women, seen as handmaidens or angels of mercy. Many left the workforce once they were married with children. Nursing wasn't seen as a profession, but more of a duty or a calling. Nursing was viewed as women's work, and therefore not fairly compensated. RNs struggled with their professional role, never mind becoming a union member. By the 1960s, there was a rise in the public sector union movement. Workers, and women in particular, began to feel empowered. RNs knew their role in the healthcare system was critical, and they wanted to be recognized for it through fair salaries and proper benefits. But there was resistance from the government, hospital administrators, and even some RNs who wanted nurses to be good, obedient girls who just did their work. Tired of being ignored and taken for granted, the first nursing activists in New Brunswick began to organize, traveling from workplace to workplace on their personal time. In 1964, a small group of volunteer nurses met with Premier Louis Robichaud to petition on the importance of improved social and economic conditions for nurses. At the end of the meeting, he responded, Dedication, ladies, that's the thing. The nurses knew they couldn't feed their families or pay rent on dedication. By 1968, nurses' salaries were frozen for three years. The Nurses Association Bargaining Committee petitioned harder and worked to have nurses included in the Public Service Labor Relations Act. In 1969, thanks to the efforts of 90% of nurses who said they would resign, the Association Bargaining Committee signed their first contract, increasing RN salaries from $373 to $430 per month. Between 1970 and 1971, the province passed two pieces of legislation that gave hospital RNs, civil service nurses, and nursing home nurses the right to collective bargaining, and they began to use it. But in 1973, the Supreme Court of Canada ruled that nurses' associations couldn't be bargaining agents. The decision cited that there was a conflict between the role of protecting the public and negotiating the wage of RNs. Two separate bargaining councils would have to be formed to ensure nurses continued to have a voice in negotiating their own wages. Not wanting to lose the momentum and solidarity that was built over the past decade, the two bargaining councils, now separated from the association, decided to merge. In 1975 in Bathurst, these nurses held the first annual meeting for the organization that would soon become the New Brunswick Nurses Union. Registered nurses earned a number of political victories in their early days of organizing, but their profession was still not valued by the government and hospital administrators in the same way as other healthcare professionals. A bold move from the registered nurses in 1975 would begin to shift this perception. Keep watching to see how.